Hi everyone, today I'm joined by my friend Julia and we're going to be talking about her experience with the 30-day water fast and her transformation, why she did it, what she experienced, like the benefits, the negatives, if she'd recommend it and yeah, just we'll be diving into that. She's got a few um, photos and, and a little video as well, so we'll probably show that at some point. But just just um, probably the question on most people's minds is like, why would you do a 30-day water fast? What, what inspired it for you? Yeah, um, I think that's a great question. I think there are several reasons. I think the two main ones were curiosity. So I heard about that people do that. And when I first heard about it, I was like, I, w I didn't even know it would be possible to just not eat for 30 days yeah. without any like negative impact. But then when I even heard that it can have positive impacts on your physical health, um, on your well-being, on the quality of your life, I was very intrigued and curious and I just wanted to know uh, what it's all about. Um, then I also heard about the good old mucoid plaque and that mm -hmm. there's a lot of dry old material in our colon that most people apparently have and that we can get out through that. And um, then it was also just an intuitive feeling of, yes, like I want to do this, I want to experience this. Um, so yeah, then I did it <laughs> and that's how it nice. went. And you, you actually did this like unsupervised, didn't you? Or like with a friend? Um... Yeah, yeah, so um, I heard first heard about it from a good friend who had been researching this topic for many, many years in advance. Mm -hmm. And we rented a house on Kopangan because there the fruit quality is really good, which we definitely wanted for mm -hmm. breaking the fast, for the refeeding. And looking back, I definitely would not recommend anyone to do this unsupervised. I would definitely always, always, always do a supervised fast with someone who knows what he's doing, like Lauren, for example, even though we did get his protocols and we knew exactly what he would be doing with his mm -hmm. clients, uh, it was still quite risky. I mean, we survived it well and everything went good. Um, but yeah, definitely, if anyone watching mm -hmm. wants to do this, uh, definitely do it supervised with someone who is experienced. Yeah. So your friend, he had quite a bit of experience with fasting, yeah, yeah, he had a lot of experience, knowledge, um, had probably watched every video of mm. Lauren Lockman in existence. So um, I did feel quite safe with him at that time, for sure. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's quite important because for me personally, I probably wouldn't feel like comfortable doing it. But like I, I have some knowledge, but it's a bit limited. So, but um, just like what, what standpoint or where were you originally? So like going into the fast, what was your like situation? Uh, like your weight or your health or what, yeah, whatever you want to. Yeah. Um, so I'd already been kind of vegetarian, vegan for maybe a couple months. So not too mm. long. Um, and I had, you know, seen all the documentaries about veganism then at that point, like Cowspiracy, Earthling, Dominion, mm -hmm. What the Health, everything. Um, so I was decided, okay, I'm vegan for life. And um then also I had done 30 days of fully raw and mainly fruits and coconut water, tomatoes and cucumber uh, leading up to the fast. Mm -hmm. So um, that was also in Southeast Asia. So we had pretty good quality uh, stuff. But looking back, I definitely think it wasn't long enough because I didn't have like a very strong foundation. So when mm -hmm. we broke the fast, I was fully raw for a couple of weeks. Um, and then, you know, pretty much fully raw for half a year but then after that I had a pretty long period where I would go back and forth a lot between eating raw and eating a lot of junk food and binge mm. eating so it was quite a rough time for me um, and I think I could have maybe prevented that if I had a better foundation going into the fast so mm. okay yeah. yeah so like how long do you think you would have needed to be like fully raw or, or, or like yeah in preparation maybe two or three years oh, okay. um yeah. yeah but then i'm also thinking like i'm not sure if after two or three years on a raw or high raw vegan diet i would still feel like i still want to do this or still need to do this because mm. i do believe that if you have been raw for so long like two or three years and you've been doing it the right way you had 
great mentors maybe who also really helped you avoid a lot of pitfalls that you can do mm. initially when you come to this lifestyle, then you might already feel at such a good point with your health that you're like, I'm happy with this. I don't need to go all the way, you know. Yeah. I, I feel great. So that's kind of how I feel right now that even though I could probably do another extended fast to, you know, get even more optimal health, I'm like, I feel so good right now that I'm like... There's no way that I want to just like do these extra two percent mm. um, to experience something better. So. Yeah, that makes sense because like that, that's the thing. It's like how how healthy do you want to be, and like does it then become like an obsession, kind of just trying to get every little um, detail. Yeah. And and you talked about mucoid plaque earlier, and um, did you did you actually see any mucoid plaque during your fast? I mean, it's a, it depends on what you define mucoid yeah, plaque to be. Define? For me personally, it's just dry old material mm. that sits in your colon from foods you've been eating in the past. And growing up, I obviously, as most people on our planet, uh, did have some meat and stuff like that. Um, and I remember there was one time during the fast where I had some dry stuff coming out that was really dry and really smelly. Mm -hmm. That was definitely not the fruit or the stuff that I have been eating <laughs> for months yeah, leading up yeah. to the fast. And it smelled kind of like turkey. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry for so much detail. But yeah, that came out. I didn't wow. have a black tube as some people describe they do mm. when they fast for 30 days mm. some people say you have like, like a, a black tube yeah that that's basically like the dry material that has been laying around your colon that now comes out i didn't have that mm -hmm. maybe i still have that in my body i don't know but um yeah so <laughs> yeah and in a minute are you okay to show on screen um just like your before and after yeah and, for yeah. sure um i already pulled that up so. oh you got it ready nice are uh, you want to do it now or uh yeah if you got it now i think it'd be useful to show early on just your like before and after picture yes so it's quite... yeah cool. yeah so this was on the left side was me on day one mm -hmm. and then on the right side on day 30 and also important to mention <clears throat> so the first day i actually drank coconut water only okay and then the other 29 days was on yeah. water and then also on the day where we took the picture we were obviously very weak because we haven't been eating for 30 days so as yeah. soon as we started eating again we looked more energized than that. <laughs> um but yeah. yeah yeah of course and what do you know like roughly how much you uh, weighed at the time I don't know how much I weighed on day one, but I would probably guess it would be around 58 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And then on day 30 was uh, 50, something around 50 kilograms. Yeah. And did you have like so, a goal you wanted to get down to or was it not like a weight goal? It was just more like a general health goal? Yeah, for me, the fast wasn't as much about weight loss. I mean, obviously a little bit because I was not as happy with where I was at beforehand, but I didn't, was, it was like just because of that. It was also mainly because the curiosity of wanting to know mm. what it's all about. And um, yeah, so, but yeah, I guess I, if if there was a goal, it would probably have been something around 50 kilos. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Yeah. And how did you actually go about doing it? So you said you drank coconut water on the first day. Yes. Uh, yeah. So how did you? Yeah. How did you take it? How did you know like how much water to drink or things like that? Did you, and so like how much were you drinking? And then um, did you take any electrolytes or like salt or things like that? No, just uh, spring water. So mm. we bought, I think, two hundred fifty or three hundred liters of spring water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many ounces that is or yeah, how many I'm not gonna... gallons. But yeah, um, so we bought a lot of spring water and then we would just sip it in small zips uh, throughout the day. And I think I was averaging around four to six liters, I think more mm. four to yeah, five, sure. four to six liters um, a day. And um, yeah, so we bought that spring water. D day one, um, we bought some fresh coconuts but my friend who joined me for the fast, he then said he already wants to just do water. So I drank the coconut water 
on day one and then just water going onward from there. And we basically followed Lauren Lockman's protocols. I don't know where my friend found them. I'm not sure, but he had the exact protocols he uses. And then um, on day one of um, refeeding, we did 55 grams of watermelon, I think every two or three hours. So it was really just a small yeah. piece. Um, and then gradually build it up. Um, and I don't know, I think on day three, we also incorporated some papayas, mangoes, mm -hmm. um, tomatoes, coconut water, stuff like that. Nice. And yeah, the, I've heard like the refeeding process is the most important. Yeah, you think, for sure. So yeah, would you recommend everyone breaks their fast with some sort of juicy fruit and like a tiny amount? Yeah, and I personally would also recommend breaking it with like something where you chew it because I don't want to like scare people, but you do really need to have respect of this. So apparently in Lauren's center, one woman died once because she was breaking it with orange juice and Lauren told her several times, you really need to zip it very slowly because if you haven't eaten for 30 yeah. days, like it, you can't just gulp it all down in one go. But she did, and then apparently she left her body and passed away. So wow. that's why I would not want to risk that. So mm -hmm. I was very glad we did it with watermelon um, or even papaya is great, um, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because obviously, it's quite um, there's quite a few videos online of people breaking it with like eggs, like raw eggs, things like that. Like it's oh, um, yeah, you, you will be so careful, haven't you, with, with what you break it with especially if it's a long one like 30 days yeah for sure and how long did you how long did it take for you to get back to like your normal uh way of eating mm, i would say i've settled into a new way of eating mm, after, after the, the fast. fast yeah so i was a lot more slow when i would eat a lot more conscious and calm i would always chew mm. the food very well because if you haven't eaten for 30 days and you don't do all of that you can just really feel it in your digestive system. Um, and I would say that some of these things even carry on till now. But obviously, like half a year after the fast, as I shared, I did have that pretty long period of binge eating, which mm -hmm. I think was a combination of different things. Um, also, I wasn't doing very well emotionally at that time. Yep. So... Um, yeah, I guess you could say it took half a year until I kind of relapsed into old habits, um, but had them coming up even stronger as they did before the fast. Because I guess my body was really deprived of calories, food and mm. nutrients, because um, I still haven't really like found my balance with how much to eat on a raw food diet back then. So... It was all a little bit imbalanced for me back then. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I've kind of gradually f found that balance now through that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because some people say like after a fast, they no longer experience cravings or like, yeah, they just don't crave old foods. Did you have that experience or, or did you initially like after your fast, obviously you broke it with fruit and then did you stay on like a raw vegan diet for a little while until the maybe like that six month period? Yeah, um, not fully raw. I would go back to other foods mm -hmm. from time to time, but it was like, I would say 90% was just fruit. And my body was also really craving that. But mm -hmm. I did have, I do have memories of moments where I would crave like other stuff. So I wouldn't say that the cravings disappear from doing such a fast I would even go as far as to say that if you do what we're doing right now you know like just eating lots of fruits lots of vegetables lots of clean carbohydrates even you know if you're transitioning incorporating stuff like sweet potatoes even rice potatoes stuff like that and you really dial in on those and always make sure you get in enough calories that to me is a much safer more bulletproof way mm. to get rid of cravings like right now i can see people eat cake and junk food 
I don't want it. Like I want my stuff that I'm used to because we we are like we crave what we eat, we crave what we put in our bodies. And I've been putting fruits, vegetables, carbohydrates into my body for so long now that my body doesn't know anything else so my body doesn't crave anything else and i would say that's a much more efficient way mm. to get rid of cravings than uh to fast because mm -hmm. when your body is in such a big caloric deficit for so long it just it can get to a point where you don't care what it is you just want the calories or your body just wants the calories and the likelihood of you going back to very calorie dense junk foods is just Uh, in my opinion, way higher. At least that yeah. was my experience. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's huge. The sustainability of the lifestyle and the diet, because like you say, you can do a fast, you can have like a transformational weight loss. But then what do you do for the next five, 10 years after that? Like, it's got to be sustainable. And I, yeah, I think I agree with you there in terms of like, maybe just a raw diet might for, for most people is probably going to be more sustainable or not even raw, but just a high carbohydrate whole food diet for most people is going to be sustainable because yeah. How do you feel about like cleanses and detox and, and that whole movement? Do you feel like there's a place for detoxing or yeah. What, what's your like, ex yeah. What are your thoughts on like the detox world and cleanses? I mean, Our bodies are always detoxifying. Our bodies mm. are always cleansing. It's a natural mechanism that we have installed, which I think is pretty cool. And when we eat junk food, then we stop that process in a way because mm. our body has to deal with the food we put in. So the less digestive load we put on our body, the more it has the ability to heal itself and I definitely think there is a time and place for um, like removing as much pressure as we can from our digestive system mm -hmm. and still I would say for most people it's probably enough to just uh, focus on high water content foods that um, give us a lot of nutrients because fruit is already really, really easy to digest, especially if we combine it properly, if we don't graze all day, but we have like, I don't know, three meals where we really, you know, fill up, not to the point where we can't move anymore, but we just, yeah. you know, fill up uh, in those three meals and then we don't eat anything in between. I think that is already enough, like relieving pressure from our digestive system I don't think we necessarily have to take it any further. If you have some specific health condition you want to eliminate, then that's a different story. And I will also say that during the fast, a lot of things have healed in my body that before the fast I didn't even know existed. Like my back, for example, it felt so free and so healed and realigned after that fast. Um, my skin was really clear, my teeth were a lot wider, and um, I also feel like, so before the fast, I was using a lot of products on my skin, like creams and shampoos and deodorants mm. and so many things, and during the fast, my skin was actually really hurting, and I think my body was eliminating all these toxins that I have been ingesting through one of our, or the largest, you know, organ we have is yeah. our skin. Um, and now if I were to put some cream on my body, I think it would really like burn. And even when I just smell other people having cream on, I feel really irritated. Mm. I, I think you can probably relate to yeah. just from, you know, eating raw food. But um, a lot of these small things have changed. And I think they probably would have changed over a long period of time if I had just been, you know, raw for a long time. But it did kind of speed some things up, but mm. I didn't have any serious health condition where I'm like, I need to heal this. And in such a situation, there's maybe some uh, like reasoning for doing like a longer fast for sure. Mm, definitely. Yeah. I think that's quite important. Like, like you say, maybe it will speed things up. Um, but yeah, like potentially we could get these benefits from like just high water content fruit, like you say, Because for me, like I went on, I think it was last year, I went on like a seven day watermelon cleanse. And like on day seven, it was like bringing out certain things on my skin, like a few pimples and things. But then I stopped and then it kind of left them there. So I think I should have gone a little bit longer. And 
because I felt like, like you were saying, little things were just sorting themselves out. Because I feel pretty healthy now, but everyone has like certain tiny little things. And yeah, I, I really felt just from going on watermelon, like uh, certain things were clearing up that I'd had like a while. Uh, just like tiny little pimples and things like that. Mm. But yeah, it's 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 interesting. I just want to um, dive back into your your kind of actual fast because I'm quite curious about the process. So you said four to six liters of water a day, and you were sipping it. And wh why why is it necessary to drink so much? Is it because you're like, is it because of this old hard waste that you're like rehydrating? Because that's what I always hear. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably, or I would say that's like the main reason. Mm -hmm. So when we have eaten a lot of dry stuff throughout our life, which maybe hasn't all fully come out yet, mm. then we're basically, and if we constantly eat a lot of high water content foods, we are also rehydrating that. Um, but it's just when you don't eat anything, you need to rehydrate it. And also I was really just craving water like during that time yeah. um like i could not have imagined doing that without water i don't know how people get the idea to just not drink for several days mm. but um no i was definitely craving water and especially when you don't eat for several days you do start to feel nauseous and that's actually also one point i want to mention um you definitely don't want to like move and do a lot of stuff during the fast ideally you yep. just want to lie in bed with your eyes closed and do nothing which can be challenging for such a long period of time so i used to do a little bit of yin yoga i used, used to do a lot of journaling um and uh, reading and drawing and stuff like that um listening to audiobooks but ideally looking back i think you really just want to lie in bed all day and mm. not get up. I think that's the most efficient way to do this because everything else just puts extra strain on your body that then your body doesn't have for replenishing, for detoxification, mm. for healing. Um, and whenever I would get nauseous, um, so you just feel in your belly if it just... Everyone who's even just fasted for, I think, a couple of days knows this feeling. So whenever you then drink a little bit of water, the nauseous feeling kind of gets away and fades okay. out a little bit again. So um, that was the main reason why it just common sense. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> to me, it so doesn't make any sense to just not drink anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. So your body, you're saying like your body gives you the, those signals to drink. You'll know yeah, that intuitively. Sure. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've always wondered about that. So like a couple of days in, you said you started feeling nauseous. Uh, I would say already like on day two or three, you start yeah. to feel some nausea. Okay. Yeah. And then did that, so as you drank water, it subsided, it, it went away? Yeah, more or less. It, mm -hmm. Not completely, like there was always a very mild feeling in the background, but it kind of fades out whenever you drink water and small sips and then... When it comes back, you drink more water and yeah. Right, okay. So. And what what was like the hardest day for you? Was that, is it the early days where it's like the most difficult? Because do you reach like a point where you're no longer hungry? Or, yeah. Yeah, I would say like every day was not hard, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. was a challenge for sure. But Definitely. I would say like the first three days, that's why I think it makes no sense to do a th three day water only fast mm. because the first three days are the hardest after that you no longer have an appetite you no longer have hunger um of course you are thinking about foods like you are thinking about old-time favorites that you used to eat you are thinking a lot about fruit like i was thinking so much about mm -hmm. mangoes and papayas and um you really look forward to the day where you can eat again but i was still always reminding myself to enjoy the process and to yeah. not be in this future mentality, oh my God, then I will break the fast. But to um, see this as an opportunity and um, something I did really enjoy was just the spiritual connection I had during that time. So I felt very connected to the divine, to the universe. Mm -hmm. And whenever I would lie down and just meditate and breathe and focus on my thoughts, it would just be so much easier 
than mm. you know previously so that was kind of nice mm. why do you think you experienced that connection to the divine because for me like i noticed a similar thing on the watermelon cleanse it was i just felt more peaceful and yeah just calm in general yeah what do you think the reason is do you think it's to do with like the energy that's freed up or yeah what yeah i would say things aren't as obscured anymore mm. so when we eat food we basically in a way i mean <laughs> I'm 100% for eating food. Mm. I'm not a vegetarian or something like that. Um, but in a way, especially when we eat like heavy foods, we kind of numb our emotions down a little bit mm. so we don't feel them as intensely anymore. And when we don't eat, we feel everything more intensely and we experience anything more intensely. The negative things as well. So, you know, there were also traumas coming up during that time. I was crying. There were like old hurtful feelings that I had in the past that were kind of being released mm. and um, but then also the positive things you know life doesn't just consist of negativity there is so much beauty and um, just so many amazing feelings that we can also feel that also get freed up as all the negative feelings get freed up so mm. I think that's why we feel that way but even yeah just like a mono island I feel like it's a spiritual experience because you connect with God through the food. Mm. It's um, it's so nice. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's definitely. It's, it's something you can't describe until you experience it. Because, like, if I would have heard this two or three years ago, I probably would have just laughed or clicked off the video <laughs> <laughs> and just thought, like, what is this, like, woo woo stuff? But <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely. You can't really talk about it until you've tried it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and so the third day you'd say is the hardest and then was it the third day you said yeah the first three days are the yeah. hardest for sure in terms of like feeling hungry and wanting food mm. and then the days after that are hard because of all the stuff that comes up like my skin was hurting so much mm -hmm. on some days because of all the creams I had put on in the past you know I even used to use like cream to there was shaving creams Mm -hmm. I don't know if that stuff still is being sold. I hope not. But like mm -hmm. there was these shaving creams that you put on your skin and then you don't need to shave and the hair just falls off. Wow. Like I don't know what you <laughs> want to do. But I used to use yeah, stuff yeah, like I'm that as a teenager, this. you know. Yeah. Um, all of that stuff would come up. All the negative emotions, like the nausea. You know, you go through this pain, but because you know this is like I always knew this is like part of the healing process and afterwards everything will become so much lighter which it did so that for me was always the motivation why it wasn't really as hard versus the first three days when you're really just wanting some food to mm. me that's like the hardest part for sure yeah and do you feel like if you would have stopped at that point just say like the point where your skin was hurting and you were releasing like old chemicals creams and emotions and trauma do you feel like if you would have stopped at that point it would have just like stayed some of it would have stayed in the body you know when it was like painful do you feel like if you wouldn't have carried on it would have just kind of still been there like a little bit mm, no i think as i said the body is always detoxifying so as long mm. as you don't go back to eating mcdonald's afterwards yeah. I, th I still think the healing process carries on but what i've heard from lauren and you know from researching this a lot is that every day you add to your fast the healing you experience is exponentially stronger so it's not All like right. you heal like this yeah, each linear. day yeah. more no no yeah, 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 that you feel like this. But it's more like you feel like this the more mm. days you carry on on your uh, fast. So even if you do like a juice feast or something like that or a mono island, I definitely think that um, the healing becomes more the more you do it because mm. it's like the momentum is... That's why a three-day fast doesn't make any sense because yeah. you're just building up momentum. It's like... You know, like, a, I guess an analogy could be sprinting. So Usain Bolt, I've heard that his 100 meter time is way slower than if he would split his 200 meter time because in the first 100 meter, he has built up such a momentum that if he keeps going for 200 meters, he's already so fast at one point that 
it's not even close if you split the 200 meter yeah. time of using bolt and compare that to his 100 meter time. And it's the same with fasting. So mm. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I can't even remember his times. I used to know them when I was in school, <laughs> but but yeah, like, like you say, you've got to kind of get momentum and get going at first, like the acceleration. That that makes sense. So then, were there any? Were there? When did you lose the desire for hunger? Would you say? Can you, um, if you can remember, I know it's probably so hunger disappeared pretty much on day three, if right. not even sooner. But of course, I was thinking about food, like mm. especially at nighttime. I would often think about like different fruits and old type favorite junk foods and stuff like mm. that. So yeah, but it's yeah. funny because I wasn't hungry, but I was thinking about food. Yeah, I don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. And I'm quite curious about sleep. How, wh what was your experience with sleep? How did you, how much did you need? And like, yeah, what was your overall so experience? So we did a funny thing, um, which I'm actually quite happy about. We didn't have any clock during the entire time. Oh, wow. So I was, I had, I think 30 post-its and every day I would remove one post-it. So I knew which day we were on, but yeah. Um, and I would say I was pretty much whenever it got dark um, and we were in the tropics, I would start winding down and sleeping and then I would wake up whenever I wasn't tired anymore and then sometimes I would stay in bed or I would go out and do a little bit of yin yoga. But um, yeah, so I don't really know, but I would say I always was very uh, consistent with keeping sort of a sleep cycle um, because I know if you don't, then if you sleep during the day, then you might not feel like sleeping at night and then it can just be like really dreadful the whole mm. time of the fast because you no longer have kind of a rhythm and then time just moves very slowly. So, yeah, yeah that makes sense. So I guess I'm trying to think in the tropics, the sun goes down at like half six, seven, maybe. Yeah, yeah something like that. And then right. it gets up at six again. And then you awake. What time are you waking up? Was it light or? Yeah, it was already light, so I would probably say eight or nine. So I was, I, I'm pretty sure I was sleeping a lot, like, yeah. during that time. So probably 12 hours a night. Okay, that's quite surprising. I <laughs> see, I thought you'd need less sleep, but I guess, do you feel like because it's such intense healing, you yeah. need all the sleep you can get? Probably, and I've always been a very good and big sleeper, so mm. I've always loved sleep. My, my parents always tell me whenever it would be 9 p.m., you couldn't ask me of anything anymore, <laughs> like my entire yeah. childhood and teenage years. So, uh, yeah, I've always been big on sleep, and I think that's why maybe I needed more. And, yeah, because your body is healing a lot. Mm. Yeah, it's so, so important. But it's, it's kind of, um, it's not, it just doesn't fit our modern society, though, does it? To sleep early, like, just say, like, when the sun goes down to go to bed at that time most people are going yeah. out for dinner or things like that so but yeah yeah it's, it's i mean i no longer do that much at the evening time mm. i'm really right now working on getting back to a place where i'm going to bed very early because i love waking up early and getting mm. things done it's such a nice feeling and whenever i do stuff at night and i go out or i go to bed late then i sleep in and then I just feel like you start the day with a different kind of energy. Mm, same here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's so important to set up the day tomorrow, like the night before, isn't it? Or at yeah. least, I'll, yeah, I agree on that one. So you lost the desire for hunger like pretty early on, like day three. And then are there any other like standout moments for you, like that you re really remember uh, leading up to the 30 days? Um, yeah, there was one time where I just realized a lot about um, my childhood and a lot of what I have been going through. And I kind of felt such a relief because I knew that's why I was feeling this way. Like I, I have moments where I just, I think we all did, but felt really sad and just not good in my childhood. And I knew where that was coming from and that was not about me. And when I had that realization, I really cried so much and I felt so much lighter afterwards so that was kind of a nice moment um and then I remember one time where I um was meditating and I just felt such a deep 
inner peace that I've never felt before because, again, everything was so freed up. There wasn't much stuff that was being obscured. And, um, yeah, and then obviously when <laughs> I had my first piece of watermelon, <laughs> I'll always remember that moment. Yeah. That do you wanna, really do you wanna, nice. You've got a video, haven't you? Do you want to show that? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can share that. If um, you don't mind, that, I think that'll be a good time. Yes. Yeah, I can't imagine that feeling <laughs> after 30 days. Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember I used to do intermittent fasting and after like, I don't know, I think I'd do like 20 hours some days. After 20 hours of not eating, I was like <laughs> ravenous. Yeah. it's It definitely makes you appreciate food a lot more mm. when you don't always graze, but you yeah. have some small fasts in between your meals. Um even just at night time and you're not completely stuffed when you wake up the next morning, but you mm -hmm. want some food, it's a good feeling. Uh, my name is Julia and I've just completed a 29 day water fast. And now I'm going to eat my first piece of watermelon. And I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> so let's mm -hmm. now. <laughs> what what were you like can you remember what you were experiencing at that time yeah i guess i just felt really grateful that we have food mm. cuz it's like such a nice experience to eat mm. yeah i just felt so grateful that food exists like just imagine not eating all day and just living I don't know. It was just like I was just so grateful that food exists, and yeah. I I also felt the. I think that's why to this day I'm such a big fan of you know raw food and fruit because I felt how much depth fruit has. Like it has so many different nuances of different flavors and the texture and everything is mm. just a perfect harmony of um, like taste it just it just so it has so many dimensions fruit you know mm. versus just dry bread it's just so bland and i guess i really felt that in that moment how uh i've not been able to experience it on such a deep level to eat beforehand because i was so much in my head mm. versus back then i was just enjoying it so much yeah, definitely. And obviously you had a bit more of a head start in terms of your diet than maybe like someone coming from a standard American diet. But I still think we'd intuitively like gravitate towards fruit after a fast. I just I just yeah. don't see for for me personally, I don't know, maybe maybe people are different, but did did you feel like that was the only thing you wanted after your fast? Or was there were there other foods like that you I could not have imagined eating eggs or bread mm. or even potatoes after yeah. that. Like I just wanted something fresh, something that hydrates my body and um, is flavorful. I feel like fruit mm. is so flavorful. Um, so, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I just want to um, like reiterate, I want just want to touch on the benefits. Like, so... You said, yeah, you can re obviously repeat them, but just what stuck out to me was like your skin, your back. You said you had back issues. What what issues did you have like with your back prior? 
Um, it just felt like I would often sit like that, like very okay. round, and it would just be. I felt like I had no muscle in my back to keep mm-hmm. it straight. But later on, I realized that wasn't because of my muscle. That was just because some things were realigned in my spine. Um, uh, and yeah, so that was going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was like the most standout benefit to you. Mm, no, I would say. The most standout benefit, to be honest, for me was, I wouldn't call it, like, I wouldn't say I'm enlightened at all, anyway, but, like, the spiritual awakening that happened during that time, like, the things I've realized about life and about myself, I would say that was the biggest, even though that was not initially why I did it, Mm. but looking back, that was the biggest benefit for me from the time, for sure. Mm. Yeah, I yeah I also found a similar thing when I found like um, you know like raw veganism or, or like just high fruit things like that. Now, like I don't, it's such a buzzword, isn't it? Like spirituality. Like, yeah. You don't want to claim to be like a guru or enlightened or spiritual, but yeah, I know I know exactly what you mean. Uh, it's quite hard to articulate, but just maybe more connected, like you say, to, to like some some sort of higher power or, or just. Yeah, I think you just feel a little bit more grateful. That's not to say, like, I'm by no means perfect now. Um, <laughs> it's not like I'm always walking around like some Zen bliss mode, but I know exactly what you mean. Mm-hmm. And that was like your, like, epiphany moment. Like, your that was when you really, it was yeah, the fast. Yeah, I would say it was like the first initial like start introduction me, yeah. introduction into this world i mean beforehand i've heard of eckhart tolle i've consumed uh, audiobooks and books from him mm-hmm. but i've never really understood uh, what it all was about until the fast i feel like that was for me um i have many moments where it just clicked mm. um i don't know can you also relate that I feel like when you come even just on this raw food lifestyle and you start eating more fruit, I'm way more intuitive, way more connected to my intuition and taking making decisions more from that point versus making them out of my head. Do you mm. have similar feeling? Or? Yeah, I think that's a good way of describing it, actually. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. And just I can just think of like ideas and like things my dad had said, like, oh, it's about the present moment or things like that that a few years before didn't really resonate with me like I just I I heard it but I didn't I didn't really feel it or understand it or yeah and it 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 did take that for me and it sounds like it was the same for you to kind of like open up my eyes to another world and actually be a bit more like receptive to to that message yeah for sure Mm. and everything leading up to the fast that happened in my life like most of the decisions I've made out of intuition Mm. and I feel like my life has unfolded in a very nice way after the fast and I don't know if that would have happened if I hadn't gotten that spiritual connection uh Mm. during that time which beforehand wasn't really that much there so yeah definitely and what would you say were there any like I don't want to make it too negative but there were were, were there any like downsides to the fast any things you'd, you'd say, yeah, weren't so great? Yeah, for sure. Um, the biggest one was definitely for me the just ravenous hunger and appetite I had after the six month period. So, as I shared, like the first six months for me were quite effortless because I was traveling, mm. I had access to incredible fruit, um, eating the best papayas in the world, and just like having a good time during my journey but then when I came back to Germany I was hit back into kind of reality Mm. Um, I didn't know how do you pick good fruit like in Southeast Asia you don't even have to be that good at fruit picking most of the stuff is just good but in Germany I first only had access to not even the bananas I didn't know how to pick good bananas Um, I didn't know how to ripen them properly I would either eat them overripe or underripe and just all these things I needed to learn. Um, And I had already been raw for so long up to that point that, I don't know, it was just really difficult for me. So then I would just go to junk food every night, eating sometimes an entire loaf of bread (laughs) and one sitting because I was so hungry. And, or my buddy was like 
craving calories so much um and yeah I just feel like it was quite a dark place for me at that time and then I don't know if you really want to call it something negative because in a way looking back that time led to me learning a lot of things evolving a lot spiritually and uh growing um and obviously also by doing all these mistakes i can now share what i've learned which i'm very grateful on youtube i don't know if i would have had all that knowledge without having yeah. had these mistakes um so yeah uh that was one negative side and then the other one was um i was quite fit before the fast so I used to be like an endurance runner and um, just do a lot of activities. And after the fast, I kind of gave it up a little bit because I remember, I don't know, two weeks into the, fa uh, into the refeeding process, I went for a run. And after, I think, five minutes, I was, wasn't even able to continue anymore. And I was like, this is not fun. Like, my mm -hmm. ego felt really triggered because <laughs> I wasn't able to run for more than yeah. five minutes. And then I gave up running completely after that time for a long time and I didn't really do much activities anymore and I feel like um, I had lost a lot of the fitness because I wasn't slowly and gradually building it up anymore but I was kind of giving up very quickly mm. and only now five years later so that's maybe an important thing to mention the past is already five years ago um, mm. wow. five years later I'm back to a level and I would say I've now over exceeded where I was before the fast but just that like initial time after the fast you really need to be very disciplined and gradual with your fitness because it's mm. you've obviously lost a lot of muscle during not eating for 30 days yeah so. definitely so how how long would you say it took to get back to that baseline would you say it took like n what nearly five years or would you say like I mean, I could have done it a lot quicker. Yeah. I've heard Lauren say um, he fasted some people, Lauren Lockman, that before the fast, they were at a level. And then after the fast, it took them some time to build up. But once they had built back up, it accelerated exponentially mm. beyond that. And I would say I'm at that point right now where my fitness accelerates very quickly. Right. Um, also because of raw foods, obviously. Mm. I got to give credits to that as well. But yeah, so I guess if you don't have that long period I had maybe two or three year period where I didn't really touch exercise um, which in my opinion is also quite unhealthy I think mm. we need exercise for mm -hmm. our lymphatic system to cleanse Definitely. Um, so then it took maybe two years to because I had such a long break where I also lost the muscle so then it took two years after getting back into exercise where I got back to where I was before I would say mm. yeah that makes sense yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's quite common because it's the same for me personally. Like when you find this lifestyle or fasting or things like that, you kind of, at a time, you lose like a desire to exercise. And I just think it's quite important. Like if, if there was one thing I could tell like my younger self, it would probably be just to keep that up. Like you can still be like spiritual or yeah, enlightened or anything like that. Not even enlightened, but just you can still live this lifestyle and exercise. And like you said, I think exercising is like very healthy, like not over exercising, but it's it's good to, uh, I think it's important to exercise. Like you say, for the lymphatic system as well. And like the, the psychological benefits, would you say like, yeah, would, would you say you experience like quite a lot of psychological benefits from exercise? Because I know I do personally. Yeah, 1000%. Like, mm. even just the fact that when I exercise throughout the day, I sleep like a baby. Mm. And I think a lot of healing also happens just during sleep, like we process emotions and stuff. And I think that was also what led to me binge eating so much the six months after the fast, because I wasn't exercising. So I had no way to especially like channel my anger that I sometimes maybe feel like for me, mm. exercise is a very great way to channel Definitely. my anger so that I don't store it inside myself. Um, so I didn't have anywhere where I could put all these emotions and then my sleep was impaired because I wasn't moving as well. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that can just like, to me, exercise is also a great way to kind of, reduce the appetite a little bit like I don't feel like as much appetite when I not like do crazy high intensive training but like just 
gentle cardio every day, like to me, that's a really great way to feel less hungry. Sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I guess half the time, like the so-called hunger, it, it's it's boredom, isn't it? Or like just because we've got nothing else to do, we just focus on food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, if if you were talking to your younger self now, what would you say? What would you tell them? Like, what lessons have you learned? Because there probably are people in your exact situation where you were like five years ago, or maybe they really want to do like a thirty-day fast. What would you tell them? Like, what what would you recommend now, if if anything's changed since then? So you mean the younger self before the fast or after the fast? Uh, I was thinking before, but you could also mm -hmm. say after, because because yeah, but like just say someone's in your situation, like they want to do a fast. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Um. So, referring to my own younger self, I would yeah. definitely tell her really think about if you want to do this mm -hmm. and don't do this as a quick fix yeah. if you want to get somewhere more quickly don't do it but if you really have the intuitive feeling that this is the right time for you to do this and you feel called then do it um and then you already said it so nicely i would tell her once you refeed get back on track with your exercise. You don't have to do anything crazy. Don't focus on kilometers or miles or times or minutes or seconds. Just do it because it feels so freaking good to move your body. That's why you are doing the fast. So mm. you feel lighter in your body. So you feel better. And yes, in the beginning, it will be challenging to get out and move. But you will thank yourself later so, so much for like getting back into that routine and having that because you will lose a lot of muscle if you don't eat mm. for so long. Definitely. Yeah, I think we often, it often seems like the goal is like to be like fully raw or to do a fast for this amount of days. But that's not really our long-term goal. It's not like what we actually want. That's just like a, a tool. It's just a, a method, a way of doing things. But like you say, you've got to kind of remember why you're actually going into the fast it's quite mm -hmm. important isn't it uh just to yeah remember your why in, basically in every area of life <laughs> so powerful yeah mm. so what what um what was your friend doing i just thought like was your friend doing exactly the same as you or was at the time uh in terms of the fast um yeah i mean i was really grateful that we did it together because yeah. it just helps so much to have someone you can talk about the things you're going through right now. And, mm. you know, he was going through similar things. So, yeah, the only difference really between us was just that he didn't do the coconut water day. So on day one, I only drank coconut water. And then the next 29 days, I drank spring water. And he did mm -hmm. 30 days on spring water. But, yeah, he had a very similar experience when we broke the fast. He also had to cry. So... Um, hmm. Yeah, it was quite similar. Nice, for sure. Just, just quickly, I've got uh, like some thoughts, like on spring water. Mm -hmm. Did you add anything to it, or is it just fine as it was because it already had like minerals in it? Yeah, it already had minerals in the water, um, and we were in Thailand back then, and the spring water we found was so good. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really grateful we did it there because it was uh, very tasty. So, yeah, but no, we didn't add anything to it, just the pure mm -hmm. spring water. Yeah. And just, do you think, do you think it's like sustainable? Do you think, do you, have you seen like examples of people who have done a fast and then they've kind of just maintained like a good lifestyle? Because for me, like you say, we're not really like interested in like quick fixes. You want like a way, a way of being. So like, would you do it again if you were in that situation? I wouldn't. I'm probably not going to do another long-term fast yeah. in this lifetime um, because of everything I shared that happened. And I don't know how different my experience would be now that I've been, you know, high raw for several years. I don't know if the experience would have mm -hmm. been different now. 
Um, but also yeah, just sure. because I don't feel like setting aside 30 days. And again, I feel like the level of health you can achieve by um, dialing in your fitness. And again, it doesn't have to be anything exhausting mm. or crazy intensive, but just dialing in fitness and dialing in your eating routine, not snacking all day, um, having somewhat of an eating window, you know, not like eating right after getting up and right before going to bed. To me, I need a little bit of space for my body to digest the food. To me, all yeah. these things combined can already do so, so well for uh, your physical health, for your vitality, for how radiant your body feels and looks. And um, so I don't feel like I want to do another one. Um, but again, I know that everything I learned through also all the hard times I went through after the fast led me to where I am today, where I'm able to be of much better support for other people as well, because I understand mm. their struggles on such a deep level through. Um, so I help a lot of people who struggle with binge eating and I would not be able to understand them on mm -hmm. such a deep level and find a solution that works for their problems if I hadn't had that same problem myself at one point. So I'm really grateful and honored to kind of be able to do that um, for other people now, um, which I don't think if I hadn't done the fast, all of that maybe wouldn't have happened. So I guess looking back, I would still mm. have done it, um, but I don't think it's necessary. And again, I don't know anyone personally who has done a fast and gotten back into like a really good routine afterwards, like fitness wise, mm -hmm. food wise, um, sleep wise. I feel like all these things kind of, uh, get compromised, suffer mm -hmm. from such an intensive experience. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that's a similar thing I've observed as well, because, it's one thing like having like immediate benefits, but like you say, you just want it to be sustainable. But I think it's a good mindset to have that like sometimes like your greatest pain can be like your best uh, teacher or like lesson. And yeah, I think I, I definitely think everything happens for a reason. And like you say, like you can actually help people who are in a similar like position. And are there any like common things you notice like with, with people who are kind of like yo-yoing? in terms of weight, because a lot of people do fasting for weight loss. Are there any things you, are there any common trends you see with people who are like looking to lose weight, like common mistakes? I don't know anyone personally who has done a fast for that reason. Um, okay. So most people I know personally who have done extended water fasts really did it for the health reason. Mm -hmm. um, and our friend Ezra, she also did a 21 day yeah. fast. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and I actually don't know where she's at with her fitness, but I think she was very disciplined about getting back into a routine afterwards. So actually I'm thinking oh, right now, she's actually one of the people I know where I feel like she's um, getting back into a really good routine afterwards. And again, the other people I also haven't really spent like close time and close proximity with. So I can't really say... But I don't know anyone who wanted to lose weight from personal life, but I've seen online a couple of examples where I definitely saw similar yeah. as with me happening. Like I gained more weight back after fast yeah. um, than I had been before. Um, so again, because of that period I had afterwards where I would go a lot to junk food. So if anyone wants to do it for weight loss and that only, I would say no. Fasting is like mm. the slowest route to get there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a huge um, distinction to make because maybe not uh, like a prolonged water fast, but I see like a lot of people, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll think like, oh, maybe I'll fast for a day, then I'll eat for a day. Or, you know, I'll, I'll like do this really strict eating window, but I, I just don't see it like working long term. I don't think it's very sustainable because it's like they have to constantly keep doing these fasts. Yeah. Because what they're eating after they break them is like not the best, just from what I've seen. Yeah. And also your likelihood, your temptation to go to junk food is much higher when you, for example, fast a day a week or you do a very short eating yeah. window or you do OMAD. I mean, I want to say it's like that for everyone. I'm sure 
to each their own, and for some people it probably works. But I want to have a life where I'm not thinking about food in between my meals. Whenever I get yeah. hungry, I go into the kitchen, I see, okay, what kind of nice food do I have that I want to eat right now, and I eat it, and then after that it's done. But when you do all these fasting and detoxing and cleansing things, you constantly mm. think about food, and you constantly think about foods that you no longer want to have because your body is so calorie-deprived. So for me, that's no way to live. So I would much rather Definitely just <laughs> take it slow, but you know, still enjoy my life and be able to do things in between. Mm. So definitely, yeah. For me, it's definitely a lifestyle of abundance rather than like restriction. I, yeah. just, I don't even like the word. It's a, yeah. Do you feel like there's anything I haven't asked you about the fast that you feel like would be important to include? No, I think you did a really great job at asking questions <laughs> and hitting all the corners. So yeah. Cool. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, where? What have you like got going on? Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, I'm really active on YouTube yeah. at the moment. So I'm mm -hmm. trying it to upload three videos a week. <laughs> so you can find yeah, me there nice. and check out my videos. I do lots of reaction videos. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I also have a community where I have lots of free resources, recipe books, um, e-courses and stuff that I'm all just giving away for free. So you can go there as well. I'll give you the link if you want to put it in the description box perfect yeah i'll do that nice yeah and i appreciate everyone listening if you've listened this far and yeah peace and love peace and love bye <laughs>